بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وبعد Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are gathered here to speak about a person regarding who the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the sun has not risen upon a man who is better than this individual. This man, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, was the best man to walk on the face of this earth after the Anbiya alayhim salatu wa salam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu belonged to the tribe of Quraysh. Now Quraysh uh, was a tribe which had special status amongst the Arabs. Why? Firstly, they were the custodians of the Haram. So they were central to the religion of those people who lived in that area. But also they were a very powerful military force. So therefore they were res respected because of the fact that they were very powerful. Now, the word Quraysh comes from where? Ibn Abbas anhuma mentioned that one day Nadr, who was one of the forefathers of Quraysh, was on a ship and whilst he's on this ship a large fish emerges from the sea never seen this fish before and this fish is an enormous fish which is you could say the king of the sea what they managed to do is that they managed to kill it he takes the head off and he brings it back to Mecca now this fish was in Arabic known as Qirshun which is a shark so this is where the name came from, meaning like the shark is the king of the ocean, we are the kings of the Hijaz, the Arabs, anybody mess around with us, we will eat you up like the shark eats all its enemies up. And this is where the name Quraysh comes from. Now it's very interesting that the surah which actually precedes the surah to Quraysh is called surah to Fil. What's the background to surah to Fil? There was a Christian king in Yemen who wanted to make his Ganesa, his cathedral, the center. Now he knew the only way that he could make this the center of all the Arabs was that he destroyed the Kaaba. So he came with an army. This army had a number of elephants in it. And they came to destroy the Kaaba. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recalls this incident in the Quran. And this is also known as Amul Fil the year of the elephant. So the, how the Arabs worked is some major incident happened and then that was where their calendar began. So the Prophet ﷺ was also born on the year of the field. So anything which happened after that, it would, it would, they would say, oh, two years after the year of field, three years after the year of field, until the time of Umar ibn Khattab anhu, in approximately 17 or 18 Hijrah, he created the the, the calendar and it started in 18 years after the Hijrah but it started from the Hijrah so in this year Abraha comes to destroy the Kaaba now when he comes with his army a mighty army there was no way that the people of Mecca could fight this army they actually went to the mountains but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his army and Allah recalls in the Quran Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel alam yaj al fi tadlil did you not see or has the knowledge of that which we done to the army of field not come to you? Did we not make their treacherous intentions go to zero? What did Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show his power. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon them a babid, small birds, a flock, a swarm of small birds in their beak. They would have a pebble in their claws. They would have a pebble. They flew over this army. The narration mentioned they would drop these pebbles. They would go through the head and come out the other end. Little pebbles, little birds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah throws, there's nothing to stop. And it totally decimated this army. To the degree, right at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَأَسْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ That we made them like chaffs crop which has been eaten up meaning like a livestock eats the crops it tramples it it chews it it breaks into small pieces that was the outcome now this was surah al-feel the next surah after this is called what 
Suratul Quraysh, very good. Suratul Quraysh is obviously named after the Quraysh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this surah off with what? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Li'ila fi Quraysh. Ila fihim rihlita shita'i wa sayf. That what we did to the people of the animals, to people of the elephants, was actually for the security of the people of Quraysh. And this is why, according to many scholars, both of these surahs are actually one surah. They are actually joined. That we did this to the army of Abraha for the security of the people of Quraysh. Why? Because the people of Quraysh would travel in the summer and the winter, south and north. With this army, they could actually no longer go south. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, why did we do this? So that they worship the rub of this bait. The rub of this house. Some of them worshipped, some of them didn't. But after this incident, the respect that the Quraysh had amongst the Arabs went out of the roof. That these were a group of people who Allah sent birds to protect them. So this is the tribe of Abu Bakr. This was the tribe of the Prophet Sallallahu Now the Quraysh broke up into small clans. So the larger clans were things like Bani Hashim, which the Prophet ﷺ belonged to. Then you had the Bani Umayyah, which Uthman anhu, Abu Sufyan anhu, belonged to. Then you had the Bani Makhzuma, also very strong uh, clan, which Khalid bin Walid, Walid ibn Mughira, with Abu Jahal, they belonged to. Now how these clans actually worked is that they were generally competing with each other. There were rivalry amongst them. So they would always compete with each other. And this is why once Abu Jahal said, he said, we would compete with the Bani Hashim in everything. They were rivalry. But when they brought a Nabi, we could no longer compete with him. Meaning we didn't believe in him because he came from the, the Bani Hashim. Very interesting, isn't it? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Jews who were in Medina, the Jews in Medina were waiting for the final prophet. But when the final prophet came, they didn't believe in him because he was not from the Bani Israel. And also many even from the Quraysh did not believe in the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi solely because he did not belong to them. And subhanAllah, you know, this shows us the evil nature of Qawmiyyah, the evil nature of nationalism and tribalism, that, that Eternal success was stripped away from you. Why? Because for you, affiliation to your tribe, to your nation was greater than the haqq. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu belonged to a clan called the Bani Taim. Bani Taim relatively was weaker than the other one. This is one of the smaller ones. And this is why when one day Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu became the caliph, his father, who was actually blind at, the mo at that time, he heard that his son is telling somebody off. And he said, who is my son telling off? He said, he's telling Abu Sufyan off. Now, who was Abu Sufyan? Understand, Abu Sufyan was the leader of Quraysh. In every single battle against the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Sufyan was the general in charge of the Quraysh besides Badr. Why not Badr? Anybody tell me here? Very good, because he was in charge of the caravan which the Muslims were intercepting. So he could not be in charge of that battle because he was with the caravan. Every other battle he was in charge. So now Abu Bakr is the Khalif and he's telling Abu Sufyan off. So his father hears this and he, Abu Quhaf and he says, Oh my son, be careful. Remain within your realms. That's Abu Sufyan you're telling off. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu smiled and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Oh my father, in this deen, Allah gives izzah to every wish and he abases whoever he wishes. He belonged to the Bani Taim, small clan. But a time came because of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he became Khalifatul Mu'mini. The Bani Taim, they, were, they had some, you know, every clan had their responsibilities. The Bani Taim had some characteristics which were, you know, they were known for. One was the character, their khuluq, their akhlaq. They were known to have good character. So 
But this is evident from Abu Bakr anhu, the best man to walk on the face of this earth after the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, their women were known to be the best of wives. So from the Quraysh, these people were known to be the best of wives. So this is also evident from who? Aisha radiallahu anha, who was the most beloved wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, how these clans worked, they would generally be in rivalry with each other. But if they had an external enemy, they would all unite. They would get together to deal with the external enemy. You know, it never mattered if your tribe, your clan was right or wrong. As long as the enemy was external, they would fight against them. And this is where, you know, they had the Jahili sta statement. The Jahili statement was that they would say, Unsur akhaka zaliman o madhluman. Help your brother, may he be a zalim or madhlum, may he be oppressor or the oppressed person. So this was a statement before Islam, meaning any your brother, blood brother, or anybody from your clan or your tribe, or anybody who has an affiliation with your tribe or clan, you will help them irrespective, right or wrong. One day the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam, is sitting with the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, and he says, Unsur akhaka walim wa madluman. So the Sahaba are quite shocked. Why? Because they know that this contravenes the essence of Islam. Islam is justice. So they say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we can understand helping a mazloom, an oppressed person. But how do you expect us to help a zalim? So the Prophet wasallam said, stop him from his dhulm. Stop him from his dhulm. And you know, look, and this is amazing, how beautiful. Now the Prophet wasallam took a jahili statement and he gave it an Islamic understanding, an Islamic paradigm. And truth is that 1400 years ago, the Messenger of Allah dealt with these issues. And today, you still see the same problems within the Muslim Ummah. Your brother comes with a problem, with an issue. You won't care if he's right or he's wrong. Your sister's got an issue. You won't care if she's right or wrong. No, she's my blood and I am going to side her. And this is what you often see. A husband and wife have an issue. All the husband's family are on his side and all the wife's family are on her side what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kunu qawwamina bil qist shuhada alillahi walaw ala anfusikum awil walidain wal aqrabin Allah says O oh you who believe remain firm for justice remain upright for justice be witnesses for the sake of Allah, even if it means giving witness against your very own self. La ilaha illallah. And then Allah says, Wal aqrabin, and then He said, Awil walidain, then your parents, and then those who are relatives, those who are close to you. See, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands from the believers. And this jahiliya mentality, it's my family, it's my brothery, it's my people, and I ain't gonna defend them, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects people to speak the truth. Speak the truth even if people dislike it. So this is how the clans and the tribes worked. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa his forefathers, meet six forefathers up. Because all the Quraysh were family. They were all family. And they're his Forefathers met with the forefathers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, six forefathers of Abu Bakr name. Anybody tell me what the name of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was? Abdullah. Very good. The name of Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu was Abdullah. Some say that his name was Abdul Ka'bah, but the most preferred opinion is that his name was Abdullah. This name was given to him before Islam. The Messenger of Allah said in the time of Islam, Ahabul Asma'i ilallahi Abdullah wa Abdurrahman. Ahabul Asma'i ilallahi Abdullah wa Abdurrahman. The most beloved names to Allah are Abdullah and Abdurrahman. Why? Because these names have a meaning of abudiyya, servitude. That they have servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the amazing thing. Look, if you are the servant of another person, it's a dhillah. It's disgrace. The Messenger of Allah said, destroyed is the Abdul Dinar and the Abdul Dirham. 
destruction to that person who is the slave of the pound and the penny, the dollar or the dime, the rupiah and the paisa. Why? Because you are abu, the abd of something else. But if you become the abd of Allah, it's honor. Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al mashil al haram ila al mashil al aqsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding the Prophet, Allah, he calls him his abd. He took him on miraj. So it's an honor to become the abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His kunniya was Abu Bakr. Kunniyas are generally known, they're often used for muhabba. So you have Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu because he loved cats. So he was known as Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Abu Ali radiallahu anhu was known as Abu Turab because the Prophet sallallahu once saw him and he was lying down, so he called him uh, Abu Turab. Sometimes they would nay call you Ab Abu because you had a child of that name. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was known as Abu Bakr because it's a camel, a young camel. And there's a strong possibility that the reason for this was that camel, young camels are very vigorous. You know, the energetic. And this is why Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was known as Abu Bakr. Others have said Abu Bakr was known as Abu Bakr. It comes from the word Bukra, which means quick, early. Why? Because Abu Bakr was always the first one to do something. And this is why, you know, sometimes you go to the Arab countries and you want something done and they delay it forever. You go to the office and they say, come Bukra, Fati Bukra, Fati Bukra. And then you come tomorrow morning and then the next morning. This is where it comes from. And also, this is also strengthened by the saying of Ibn Abbas anhu, who said regarding Abu Bakr anhu, Kana sabbaqan, la ilaha illallah. What a bi kana sabbaqan. And we will discuss this later on. He said he was always the first person to do actions of good. Nobody could ever beat Abu Bakr anhu in doing actions of good. During his life, Abu Bakr anhu was given different names. So one of the names that Abu Bakr anhu was given was Atiq. What does Atiq mean? Atiq means to be freed, okay? For Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had a specific context which Aisha radiallahu anha narrates. She says, I was sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa one day and there was a group of Sahaba radiallahu anhum sitting with him and between me and them there was a curtain. And then a man walked in and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever it pleases that he sees a man who is freed from the fire of Jahannam, then look at this man. It was Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu. Another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said directly to Abu Bakr, Anta atiku minanar. You are freed from the fire of Jahannam. So this was subhanallah. And his father would often refer to him. Abu Kuhafa would often refer to Abu Bakr as Atiq. So when he became the Khalif, when he came to Mecca, he referred to him as Atiq. When he had a go, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, so Abu Sufyan, he called him Atiq. So this was one of the names. Another name that he was also known as is Sahib. Companion. Companion of who? La ilaha illallah. Companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This happened whilst Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and the Messenger of Allah in the Hijrah whilst they were in the cave. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu looks up and he sees the Mushrikeen right at the mouth of the cave. And he says, the message of Allah, if one of them look down at their feet, they will see us. And then Allah reveals the verse. And the portion of the verse is, is يَقُولُ لِلصَّاحِبِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا When he said to his companion, do not grieve, for Allah is with us. Now, wallahi, this is amazing fadila for Abu Bakr Siddiq. Why? Because he is the only companion of the Messenger of Allah, only Sahabi of the Messenger of Allah who is referred to as Sahabi in the Quran. And this is why some people, some scholars have a very strong verdict regarding that person who denies that Abu Bakr anhu being a Sahabi because Allah has called him a Sahabi in the Quran. Another name which Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu was given was Siddiq. Most likely the most honorable name that he was given was Siddiq. When did this happen? This happened after the Miraj. So the Prophet wasallam goes to Miraj. He comes back. Next day he goes out. One of the first people he bumps into is no other than Abu Jahl. 
So Abu Jahl says sarcastically, he says, Muhammad, Muhammad, what's new? So the Prophet said, you know what's new? Last night I went from Mecca to Jerusalem. Abu, Bakr, uh, Abu Jahl is astonished. He said, you did all this in the portion of last night? The Prophet said, hold on, it doesn't stop there. From there I went up to the heavens. He said, you did all this in the portion of last night? He said, yes, I did all this in the portion of last night. He said, if I gather the people, are you ready to tell the people of Makkah what happened? The message of Allah said, yes. So what happens is that they gather the people of Makkah and the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says to them, last night I traveled from Makkah to Jerusalem and I led the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam in salah. He said, you did all that in a portion of last night? He said, yeah, but it doesn't finish there. He said, from there, I went to the heavens. The narrations mention that some of them began to clap. Some of them placed their hands over their head. Some of them began to slap their thighs. Some who were really weak in their iman actually turned away from the deen. So they thought, this is the ideal situation. Let's go and convince Abu Bakr. Even Abu Bakr won't buy this one. And Abu Bakr was the right-hand man of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if Abu Bakr doesn't buy this one, then the dawah of the Messenger of Allah falls apart. So they go to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who, who was at that time only Abu Bakr, not Siddiq. So they go to him and they said, Abu Bakr, you know what your companion saying? He said, what's he saying? He's saying that he traveled from Mecca to Jerusalem in a portion of a night. And then from Jerusalem, he went to the heavens. Abu Bakr said, Awaqala dhalik. Did he say that? They said, Yes, all excited. Then he replied, Idan sadaqa. Then he's speaking the truth. He said, What's so amazing about that? He said, Often I am sitting in his company, and Jibreel comes and descends from the heavens to him. Upon one occasion, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to call him up to the heavens, what's so amazing about this? It was upon this occasion Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was given the title Siddiq. Hukayn bin Sa'ad says, this is very important, he says, I heard Ali radiallahu anhu say on numerous occasions on the pulpit that this title of Siddiq was given to Abu Bakr from Jibreel from the heavens. Even Ali radiallahu anhu once said to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, oh Abu Bakr, you were a person who Allah gave the title of Siddiq from the heavens. What's the verse in the Quran? He said, وَالَّذِي جَاءَ بِالصِّدْقِ وَصَدَّقَ بِهِ He said, Allah named you Siddiq. وَالَّذِي جَاءَ بِالصِّدْقِ the Prophet ﷺ, the one who came with the truth was sadaqa bihi and the one who believed in it regarding yourself. You know, every single day, let me tell you the status of being a Siddiq. Every single day in our salah, in every rakat, we read Surah Al Fatiha. Every day in Surah Al Fatiha, we read Ihdina Sirat Al Mustaqim, Sirat Al Ladina Anamta Alayhim. Oh Allah, show us the straight path, the path of those that you have favored upon. Have you ever thought who those are, who Allah has favored upon? You know, we say it, we read it, have you ever thought? This verse of the Quran is actually elaborated by another verse. The tafsir of this Quran, of ayah is done by another ayah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever obey Allah and his Rasul, فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ عَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah says, whoever obey Allah and his Rasul, those are the ones that we have blessed our favor upon. Then Allah says, from the prophets, from the Siddiqeen, from the martyrs, and from the pious people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with the prophets, those who he has favored upon. Now nobody chooses to be a Nabi. Allah chooses you to be a Nabi. You have no choice. Nobody said, I want to be a Nabi. Nobody can choose to be a Nabi. So that goes out. That's chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Siddiqeen. Then he says the martyrs. And then he says the pious people. The ulama say 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen a sequence, a tartib here, according to the virtue of people. The most virtuous are the Anbiya, and then the Siddiqeen, and then the Shuhada, the martyrs, and then the pious people. Out of all the Siddiqeen, Abu Bakr is the greatest Siddiq. There is no Siddiq which is greater than Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. One day the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam climbed on the mountain of Uhud. And Uhud began to shake. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uthbut ya Uhud. Stop shaking, O Uhud. For indeed upon you is a Nabi, a Siddiq, and two martyrs. Referring to Umar and Uthman radiallahu anhu. Zakumullah khairan for watching and please do not forget to watch the next episode and inshallah with your du'as there will be plenty more history series coming very soon. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.